making pandan cake today. For measurement and ingredients, you can check it out on my website www.jbabe.net. Okay, now we need to make some fresh pandan juice. So I need some pandan leaf. Wash, rinse, and chop them small. Put it into the food processor. If you don't have one, you can use a blender or any other method that it can help you to extract the juice out of it. Anyway, now I need to put two tablespoons of water into the pandan leaf because the pandan leaf itself is actually quite dry. It doesn't really give you much water, much juice, I say. Um, so I need to add some water in it. Anyway, later we only need two tablespoons of the pan and juice. So even if you get more, you have to discard it. Uh, we only need two tablespoons. Otherwise, later your cake will be too wet and it's not going to be nice. Um, also, where can we get the pan and leaf? You can get it at any Asian shop like the Indonesian shop or the Thai shop. Uh, they will have it there, okay? And we need about 10 to 12 leaves to make the juice. Okay, now it's ready. We need to get some juice out of it. I use a fish bag and I put it over a little bowl so that it can help me to hold the leaf. Simply just put everything in it and then squeeze it hard to get the juice out. Okay, so just squeeze as hard as you can to get the juice out. All right, so what we need for making the cake. Um, we need some olive oil, fresh pan juice we just made, and some coconut milk. I choose a really thick one because I don't want watery batter, and some caster sugar, and we need some pan and extract as well, but just a little bit, okay? Some cake flour. We must use cake flour because we want it really soft and some egg yolks. This is for the egg yolks part. And we need to do the egg white part later, which is egg whites, cream of tartar, and some caster sugar. We will do it in two parts, okay? First, we start with the egg yolk part. Okay, let's start with beating the egg yolks a little bit first. And then I'm going to add in the caster sugar. Remember, this recipe is calling for a caster sugar, okay? Don't use granulated sugar because the caster sugar can be incorporated much easier. And uh, yeah, we want everything smooth. So just keep on whipping it until it becomes really thick and in lemony color. So after you add in the sugar here, just whip it until it becomes really thick. So now, this is the consistency that I'm looking for. Look, it's very thick and is in lemony color. And it's kind of drizzled back when you lift it up. Now I'm going to add in the fresh pan and juice, the coconut milk. Remember to use a really thick one because we don't want watery butter. And the pan and juice, please don't use any more than two tablespoons. These are very important, okay? Unless you want a wet cake. And I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, pandan extract because I want to give a little bit of color. This one has a bit of the green food coloring and I want a little extra of the pandan smell. So I add a little bit in it, okay, and mix it well. You see the color becomes a little more green already and it's going to look beautiful. Um, maybe you want to ask, um, can I omit the uh, fresh pandan juice? Yes, you can, but I can tell you it will taste very different because I tried once that without the fresh pan and juice, it is so different and you won't appreciate it. It just tastes so fake and it's not very nice. So here, I'm going to add in the cake flour, but I'm going to do it in two batch because uh, yeah, I want to mix them well. I don't want any lumps. And these flowers, I already added in the baking powder and sifted them two times already. Now, this is the third time I added in. Please do not be lazy. You need to sift your flour for the sponge cakes. 
Okay, the reason why I need to um, do it in two batches because I have to make sure that they incorporate really well because I don't want any lumps because if your batter has lumps, basically you can taste it later and it's not very nice. So do it two times. Uh, after I fold in the flour, I will use the whisk to whisk them until they are really combined. But remember, do not over mix it all also. Just mix them combined and make sure it has no lumps. And then I'm going to add in the um, olive oil. After it's all mixed, I am going to kind of, yeah, stir in the olive oil. You don't have to mix it too much, just make sure that it is in there. Okay, now we're going to do the egg whites part. Okay, there are three things that you have to remember and keep in mind because that is the key to making it successfully or not and it's so important. First, your egg whites has to be at room temperature, okay? You have to leave it out after you take up from the fridge for at least 15 to 30 minutes or until it reached room temperature, okay? If it's too cold, it's not gonna form. And second, you have to make sure there is no egg yolks whatsoever in your whites because there even a little trace of egg yolks is going to ruin it as well. Your egg white is not gonna be able to form. Okay, now when you see the egg white started to be foamy, I just added in the cream of tartar. You can omit it if you don't have cream of tartar, but um, you have to make sure that you do the egg white part as very well. Um, okay, three, what you need to pay attention to is that you have to make sure your bowl and your whisk has no grease whatsoever. A little trace of grease is not gonna form either. Now I'm gonna start to add in the, the sugar Please do it in a few times because if you add it all at once, it's not gonna make it incorporate well enough, okay? You're gonna taste the sugar. So have to do it a few times. You have to be patient, okay? The egg white part is basically one of the key of making this cake successfully or not. Okay, now the egg whites has four meringue and at this stage uh, it is about 80-90% ready. Then I will take off the whisk and do it by hand because with the meringue um, you can easily um, over whip it or under mix it. I don't want to over mix, I mean over mix it or under mix it whatsoever so I will do it by hand because I can feel it and see it without the speed, all right? So, um, yeah, when you um, feel that, oh, okay, now this is a little too soft, but it's almost there, then I will add a, a few more whisk until it, it reach the, um, the consistency that I want. Usually, um, when I beat it until, you know, the peak is sticking up and uh, is firm enough that it can stand by itself, then it is ready. But um, yeah, doing it by hand at last is really good. See now, this is perfect. See when I turn it upside down, it won't fall down and the peak stayed up, but it doesn't get hardened. It is not lumpy because when you over mix it, it becomes lumpy. Okay, now both mixtures are ready. What we need to do is to combine them. Um, I need to take one third of the egg white mixture and fold it in. Remember, it's to fold it in. You see my um, my movement that I scrape the side and kind of come back up from the middle. That's called folding. You need to know this technique when you're making sponge cakes. Anyway, keep on folding and try not to deflate all the air. We are trying to make so much air with the egg white so we don't want to deflate it okay um yeah i'm just um after you fold in the first one third part of the egg white then just fold in the rest of the remaining and then we can um, pour it into the pan okay now my batter is mixed now it's ready to be poured into the baking pan. Remember, we need to use this kind of baking pan with the hole in the middle of the, the, the pan. Um, 
that's how we make it. And remember, please do not grease your pan. We don't need any grease or oil in it. Okay, just um, yeah, pour it in there. Okay, now we're at the final step. Um, remember to do these two things. It's very crucial whether your cake will look good or not. First, I need to use it, this kind of flat knife spatula, or you can use knife to cut out the excessive air pocket. So make sure you run through it like me um, a few times. And then I'm gonna tap on my countertop for about 10 times hard tap it hard to release the excessive bubbles. We don't want our cakes to end up having a lot of holes inside. So you have to do these two steps. And then it's pretty much it. Um, put it into your preheated oven at 170 degrees Celsius for the first 15 minutes. And then turn it down to 150 degrees for another 25 minutes so a total time of 40 minutes and then i usually turn it off and let it sit in my oven for another five minutes then i'll take it out and let it cool down completely so now my cake is completely cool remember when you take out the cake from the oven you have to turn it upside down otherwise your cake is going to shrink and that is going to just not going to be so nice so remember to turn it around so now we, we need to cut the cake out it does take some techniques and practice um, just to remember that you need to be confident when you're cutting it don't be afraid okay it takes a couple of times of practice uh, now in the middle I just cut it along the side but the side part the edge is the most crucial part when I find the the very edge um, part, I will stick to it and then I will cut it along it with pressure and confidence. Do not do the jigsaw movement. If you do the jigsaw movement, you're going to cut out some piece of cake and then it's going to create some hole on the cake and it's not going to look so nice. So once we're done with the side, take out the cake and then we need to do the bottom. Actually, the bottom is going to be our top of the cake. So you got to be careful as well. Um, yeah, just does take practice again. Um, remember, find the edge and cut it with pressure and uh, confidence. Well, this is about it. Um, after everything is done, keep it in the cake container. Don't put it into the air tight container because you need to let it breathe. And also don't need to put it into the fridge because it will harden the cake. Just keep it at room temperature. It can be kept up to a few days. Be the judge of yourself. If it doesn't taste good, throw it away. But I'll be surprised if you don't finish it with within two to three days. Thank you for watching.